Hey y'all, welcome to the first video of my channel. Um, got this Smith Corona PWP 7000 LT personal word processor uh, in an odd place. I, I picked it up actually at a pawn shop for five bucks. <laughs> it was on their shelf um, of stuff that they couldn't sell. So I looked at it, um, you know, looked like an old computer, had a floppy drive. <laughs> Um, but not a normal floppy drive. It's one of these odd proprietary data diskettes. So, figured I'd pick it up just to goof with it and see what's going on. Um, came with the entire instruction manual, which is pretty thick. It's It tells you quite a bit about this in the owner's manual. <laughs> um, it also came with... Uh, where did I put it? There it is. It also came with a carry bag. <laughs> also saying Smith Corona on it. So that was where the, tab, the price was, but it fell off since then. So decided to pick it up. Um, thought, you know, uh, no problem. I, I'll be able to find a power cord for this. However, if you look here, it's 12 volts AC. So 12.5 volts AC. Uh, not exactly common. And a lot of old calculators and, and Texas Instruments devices used it. But nothing I could find offhand, so it kind of sat for a while um, until tonight when I was sitting here cleaning up and saw it and decided to take a look at it and see if I could get it started. Um, so I was reading through the manual, and I didn't know this, but it actually has a battery compartment. So this is a rechargeable battery, which is a pain to get out, like... Seriously, so I, I won't take it out of there. Well, I guess I have to take it out of there so I can show you what I did, but Let's see if I can get it out. There we go. All right. So, this is the battery pack. Um, it charges externally on the original units, however. I've modified this one. So, um, when I took this apart, originally, inside was a set of batteries that actually said 7.5 volts. And it's DC, because they're NICAD batteries. So, it was a KR4500. Um, yeah, and from Sanyo. And it was six of those D-cells, uh, rechargeable D-cells, in series. So seven and a half volts so i was thinking well i have to have something that's seven and a half volts you know i could put more d cells in there but then i remembered i got some uh old battery packs that i took apart and charged and i'm actually using lithium ion in here so i uh took out the old batteries tried to clean up the whew, horrible mess of <laughs> uh foam that was in here um, and <clears throat> rig these together, put them in series, you know, uh, this is already this way. There's a filter cap or something in the side there. Uh, I have a picture of it. I'll post it in the link when I post this, but I put this back together and just about five, 10 minutes ago, fired this up. So I'm going to put this back in. this up and flip this around right. now we flip the power switch all right <laughs> very clear very clean um and it boots into its ROM. This has a uh, switch <laughs> dark mode. But uh, right here, this this is nice, clear, bright. Um, so we'll hit, you know, create a document. And look at this. Works. All right, well, so <laughs> I, I'm gonna mess with this a little more. 
Uh, it's, it says memory remaining up here, right? So I guess that's 50 bytes or 50, uh, 50K, right? So those are bytes. Let's look at the manual and see what it actually is. Um, let's see if we can get out of here. You know what, I, I don't know the instructions yet, so I'll just reboot it. I used to have a compact, <laughs> uh, you know, long format laptop like this um, that I gave away probably 15 years ago, and I regretted it ever since because I used to play Cross on it, a old Apogee like text-based game, and it, it was actually really fun. But uh, you know, you can you can play that on anything. But I don't know something about playing it on this like long format made it more interesting. So, um. Let's see. I wonder if there is anything on the data disk. What's at five? Ooh. It's noisy. Um. Yeah, that may need some help. Rejecting the disk made it move forward. Hmm. Well, that sucks. But, you know, I didn't expect this to just work all at once. Yeah, I'll have to reboot it again. I'll have to read the manual. I actually wonder if this is a standard floppy interface. It looks like it's a three and a half inch. I wonder if you could replace that. Um, maybe the ROM won't work with it, but... It's some proprietary format. All right, let's look at... Flip this data disk over. Yeah, it appears to be two-sided. Yeah, well, let me show that. So it's the same on both sides. So I'll put it back in this side. I guess there's a B and an A, so I'll put it back in the B side here. And we'll try recalling another document. Mm. Probably a bad belt would be my guess. It's not probably not spinning. It's making a terrible noise. If we can let you hear that. Not so hot. When I eject the disc, though, it does stop. And then this should load. Yeah. So there we go. Disc read error. Look at that, man. Well, um, keyboard feels a little spongy. It's got a good click to it, though. I... I bet you if I use it a little more, the domes will probably loosen up a bit. Um, I could totally see typing on this. Uh, you know, <laughs> it might be fun. Uh, it does have, according to the manual, which I'm going to flip this off so it doesn't keep whining at us. According to the manual, it can interface with printers. So it's got a serial out. And I believe there's another. No, that's it. So it's that serial out right there that um, should be able to communicate with other printers. Um, there's a few specific ones listed in the manual. Let's see if I can flip this over here. Yeah, quite a bit of stuff in here. Um, it's right at the beginning here. There we go too far. Whoever had this didn't use this manual. The binding's not bent at all. So, yep. So, see, there's a printer connection there. Um, I may need to build some kind of cable in between. We'll see. I have a few dot matrix uh, line printers. But interestingly, there was also... Oh, man, it was way back here where it was talking about modem connectivity terminal. Yeah. So you can connect to a remote computer. So this may actually be, uh, you know, a good terminal to, to just get into stuff via serial. Um, you know, probably a little excessive, but interesting and portable at least. So I could just break it out without having to deal with a whole lot of garbage just hook this up and make sure I've got the right connection, you know, information in here. So, 
Oh, there's a quick reference on the back. I did not notice that. I'll have to make a copy of this and stick it with it. So anyway, you know, short unscripted video. Um, I've been wanting to put something on YouTube for a while. This thing popped up tonight and figured, well, might as well. I've got a lot of retro tech <laughs> to go through. Um, I posted about this one uh, on Battle Stations. Um, I picked it up recently. I'll be taking a look at this. I've gone through it. I've installed a new hard drive. Um, cleaned it up substantially. There's still a bit of rust. But, uh, you know, if, if I'm going to take care of that, I'll probably have to sandblast this whole case. Um, WD-40 didn't take it off. Vinegar, you know, started making the paint tacky. So, And then there's a 386, Apple IIc, and uh, an old Dell Dimension. So... Plenty to go through, <laughs> lots more in the basement. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick video. You know, just trying to get something out there so I can start posting more interesting content and find some way to script it right. Like as of right now, these videos are gonna be unscripted. I'll be messing with a lot of editing, you know, raw while I get into the swing of things and figure out timing. I have a little girl on the way, so I'll make it very difficult to do videos when she's born, which is in like four weeks. But I will also have some time off work where I may actually have some time to, to go to the basement and show you what's going on down there and show you, you know, the different projects I've got mid-flight. There's quite a few. So, oh, I forgot about these guys. I got a Apple or, yeah, an Apple uh, CD6350, I think it is. Um, I just got that working. I just got a new keyboard for it. And then I got a Olivetti, a.k.a. Uh, an AT&T 6300. Also working perfectly, has a hard drive, Carmen San Diego, etc. So all stuff I, I look forward to uh, sharing with everyone on the channel. Thank you so much.